Welcome to Cadence Design Systems Fidelity Tutorial Tuesday. Today we will talk about the different lattice options available in Stitch. As a reminder, Stitch is the mesh generator for the Charles Elias solver. The purpose of Stitch is to build a volume mesh suitable for Elias computations and the mesh generation relies on the Voronoi diagram method. So let's discuss the Voronoi diagram technique. In a nutshell, it is a unique partition of the space based on a set of points called the generating sites or seeding points and the Euclidean distance between them. After the volume is seeded with the generating sites, the watertight and manifold triangulated geometry serves to clip the diagram. There are two important advantages to the Voronoi diagram. First, there is no convexity constraint. The clipping surface can be of arbitrary shape. In addition, the clipping diagram and the Voronoi diagram length scales are independent. Now let's talk a bit more about the seeding lattice. The lattice is a result of the distribution of the generating sites in space. The generating sites are the locations where the solution will be discreetly sampled. This is similar to the cell centers in finite volume methods or to the nodes in finite element methods. The faces are perpendicular bisectors between generating sites, and the cells are the union of all of these faces. The cell construction is robust under perturbation and movement of the generating sites. The topology of the mesh is an outcome of the distribution and organization of the generating sites. Here, for example, is a Cartesian lattice because the seeding points are aligned in all three directions. Manipulations of the lattice or stencil can be leveraged to produce isotropic and self-similar cell topologies or regions with different generating sites organizations. Here is an example where we have a Cartesian background and a region of annular topology. For domains under solid body motion, only the interface cells will change in topology, but the remainder of the mesh does not need reconstruction. There are four kinds of packing available in Stitch, meaning four different arrangements of the generating sites which allow you to start with a different lattice. For example, you can start with a 14-sided polyhedral lattice, which is a default, or a cubic lattice. Most of the time, you will use the default root 3 lattice which was the first one implemented and the most heavily used and tested. The clearest benefit of a cubic lattice is its lower computational cost due to the lower phase count per cell. But the lower phase count also means less communication with neighbors and less mixing, which could potentially reduce the solution accuracy. The root 1 and root 2 lattice types have been implemented more recently and should be used with caution as they haven't been heavily tested. Now let's see how to apply the different lattice types on a simple geometry. Let's start Stitch from the terminal and give it a geometry file as argument followed by the interactive flag. Then let's connect our connect app to the Stitch session. Here is the geometry that we have loaded. Let's create a cutting plane through the middle and realign the view. Under the menu Stitch, let's apply a background cell size of 0.05, then open the Points Packing menu. What we are seeing on the screen is the default, the root 3 packing. I can switch to Cartesian to visualize the cubic lattice. With an input file, if you don't define the packing, the default will be root 3. You can change the lattice type using the command hcp underscore packing and, for example, Cartesian, C-A-R-T. 
you may want to realign the packing with the flow direction for proper mixing. In that case, you can use the command hcp underscore e0 followed by the flow direction axis. By default, the seeding direction is the x-axis. I can change it to the z-axis as if the flow was coming from top to bottom. Or I could seed at a 45 degree angle. The placement of the generating sites can also be used to add anisotropy, such as viscous layers, but this will be the subject of another video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button to subscribe to our channel for more upcoming videos like this. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please drop us a line down below or connect with us on LinkedIn, which is linked in the description. Thank you all and have a great Tuesday.